three weeks were found on deceased nuclei cast from B45 supplement and Tabi, and three were found on metal, melted glass bead on a grave in the Kirch cemetery. Raw material are not uh, determined, but it was quite high quality te uh, textile, probably uh, wool, but no analysis. Uh, okay. Okay. Large number of uh, spittle walls found on the Bronze settlements showed that the spinning technique was in common use. Both S and Z twisted yarns were in use, but Z twisted was seen to be more popular. Uh, Long weights were also found in great numbers of settlements, and they attest the use of rough weight loom. Tablet weaving probably was in use for producing ribbons, but we don't have any direct source. We only can imagine that some kind of ribbon were produced. Probably pulp was also productive for warm and waterproof headwear, belts, and elements of horse harness. Okay. Quite high share of sheep bones in the Bronze Age assemblages <coughs> from both settlements and cemeteries can be used as a proxy data for using sheep wool. Based on analysis of sheep bones and fibers from Scandinavia and Alpine region, in the Bronze Age we already had a few uh, different breeds of sheep. These could come from a small double coated brown sheep, similar to a soya sheep. Also, horsetail hair could be used for some kind of textile, for example, such as, as hair nets. Analysis of textile from uh, Schwebie and Wabendi cemeteries uh, suggests some addition of raw or red deer hair in the textile. Other of these analyses claims that it made the textile waterproof, but I think uh, in this particular cemeteries we don't have a textile as a textile, but pulp. And the addition of raw and red, uh, red deer hair are normal or normal traditional among Siberian tribes uh, to produ produce pulp. Plant fibers are less known. Plus cultivation is not very very well documented for the Bronze Age or the Iron Age. It's uh, owing to the high level of lipids in the seeds and entomophily of uh, plants. The earliest bunch of flax stars known from Poland is dated to early Roman period and comes from Red in Tampa Although we can assume also another source of the source for plant fibers, nettle. Uh, and the presence of nettle textile was attested for bronze, uh, bronze Age grave uh, loose hoy from Denmark, dated to the 10th century before Christ. Oh. Go farther. There are few human images uh, of the Bronze Age. Human figure, figure is usually built on of several dashes and give no hints to about sex and dress, unless the figure is on horseback or with weapon. Uh, except for warrior paraphernalia, main costume remains of <coughs> Easter. We know from adjusting region from, uh, region from Scandinavia and uh, Alpine region that male also wear long blouses or something like kilt, no trousers, sorry guys. Uh, for a female costume, we don't know any exact source also. Uh, So-called dancers we have done here and from Tesla are built of 200 squares. We could see this image vision of short blouse and long, long skirt like most Bronze Age Scandinavian lot coffins, but except for the uh, expector of course, but it could be only an ornament. The only full figure human representation was found in a grave on the cemetery in uh, We have here quite elaborate uh, pectoral, pierced ears, and some lines on the hands, maybe it's a representation of a bracelet. Not much can be said about the costume itself. The decoration of lower part could be just decoration or in the presentation of a skirt with belt and apron. Okay. Uh, 
don't think my uh, male customs remain unclear. There are some hints about shoes and outerwear. Let's start with, with outerwear. The only direct source uh, we have for Poland is a cape of drop in or driven girl. It's a body, body. Uh, a girl aged circa 20 years old, was thrown in a shallow pond and buried in it. She was wrapped in a short sheepskin cape, sewn from four pieces. This piece. Uh, short uh, sheepskin cape sewn from four pieces with double twisted leather cord. There are a few rooms mm -hmm. that uh, analogous, analogous for this. The leather cape was found also with 14th century men from uh, age 5 and then. Sorry. And then. Thank you very much, <laughs> Netherlands. <laughs> very difficult name. Uh, but this is one of uh, but this particular one cake was uh, made of uh, calf skin and some from four pieces but in quite different manner. Uh, another analogy is a cake of uh of a woman. She also had a sheepskin cake uh, and the date for this burial uh, Ultra Mosa drop meat girl is quite similar. Uh, no direct source of shoes from Polish territory, but we have some proxy data. I mean, shoe or food for Britons. Uh, there are over 30 uh, such finds. One from Modelniczka here. Uh, Show some resemblance to short laced shoes now, also from this Netherlands, but not uh, and also from Hochstadt mine uh, months. Those boots were made of leather, deer leather, or maybe could be also bust shoes similar to those used up to the 20th century. Another example is a quote from uh, Jimice. It could be interpreted as an um, imitation of decorated overwork shoe with uh, longer uppers, similar to those from to them from South Mine. Gloves need to be fastened somehow with pins or leather, uh, later with people are uh, probably with some kinds of button links and straps. We should remember that metal fasteners can be only a smart part of all fasteners used at the time. Most of them could be made of organic material and the metal pins and cufflinks can serve only as an uh, exclusive form of regularly used objects. Okay. We have two sets and two traditions in the early Iron Age. The female set is quite well defined. It consists of composite necklace, uh, or pectoral, headwear, and earrings. Uh, sometimes headwear with a temporal ring. Generally, jewelry of neck and head. In other tradition, Pomerania facing culture, uh, female. Wounds are marked also by giving a necklace and a pin with a swan neck and this head. Another set can be defined as a union, a unisex. Both men and women uh, have single necklace, pin on cupola or bracelet. We still need some more real, reliable uh, anthropological analysis to determine if there was in the Bronze Age something like male set of ornaments or male set of costume because males are usually uh, identified by warrior from Canaria. We have in Northern tradition this Pomeranian uh, culture, Pomeranian facial culture, another set for men uh, <coughs> consisting of the Peter Figua and warrior from the Paraphernalia. Most information about uh, headwear come from information gra graves from uh, the southwestern part of Poland. Headbands or diadems were made of leather, textile, possibly felt, and brass band, and were decorated with bronze or lead buttons of plates. At the back of the head, the headband was fastened with a bigger bronze button or aglet. They were worn uh, directly on hair or on a pale covering hair with some kind of coils or pennants. Richly decorated headbands seem to be a female costume element with good anthropological uh, analysis. Male headwear are less known. There are information about 
caps from upper CSE and early Iron Age cemeteries, and those caps supposed to be girded with leather belt, fastened with bronze buckle. Taking into account different types of leather from the Bronze Age and early Iron Age Europe, caps could be made of both felt, leather, fast, and bark. And the shape, depending on the material, the heat could be hemispherical, conical, or pointed. Temporal wind also were found uh, in the male graves, uh, but usually are plain, only two of them on each uh, <coughs> temporal area. Female uh, temporal set was more elaborate. Among other headwear, we cannot forget about helmets. Different types of helmets were in use. And the only one known from Polish territory is this one from Szczecin Stroje. And it's quite similar to those forms used uh, among Ornfield in Neon. Almost. And here we have Pomeranian face forms. Almost all Pomeranian uh, culture forms, those with anthropomorphic features and those without, have a head like lead. Those leads are varying very much. And it's hard to point any clear correlation between gender mark and the shape of the lead. But the nice of, uh, she analyzed this lead. Uh, suggest that generally there, there are some uh, small things about female lead, but I will proceed to you. Generally, it seems that the shape of lead is a kind of necessary compromise between function as a lead and the representation of some kind of headwear. It is uh, definitely not the strongest gender marker of the female or male uh, own. Uh, Dr. Meiser pointed out that the female gender marker usually are accompanied by liquid asymmetrical uh, ornament imitating hairnet or bonnet or headband with, with veil. And to conclude, uh, it's not much about, known about the costume itself. Some data from textile production we have, and that's all. And I doubt that it will change uh, in the closest future. We study what is most durable in archaeology with jewelry. Thank you very much. <laughs>